leadership style. I believe that um, my administrators in the district would describe me as hands-on. I'm active and involved in everything that they're doing in terms of their building leadership. And from an accountability standpoint, again, what you would see from me coming into this district would be that, and, and it's the same, it hasn't changed, is that student achievement has to be the number one goal. It's what you focus on. College and career readiness as the ultimate measure is what we're looking for in terms of developing our students. It's, and, and if you look at the features of high performing districts, there was just a research study that was released last week. The, Features of high performing districts is a singular focus on student achievement. What about the students that are not college bound? Again, the, the, the important piece of how districts are going to be measured is that college and career readiness, and you can't forget that second C. I agree with you 100%. Uh, we have a number of students that are participating in outstanding programs at Auburn. From my district, I know Chardon is an active partner at Auburn as well, and it's certainly an important role, and it, and it has changed in our nation in terms of what it means to be career ready from what it was 20 or 30 years ago. It's absolutely an integral piece. I would see us continuing that relationship with Auburn, but also looking for ways that we can extend that into the classroom here as well, not just for the students that go to Auburn, because there's an important college and career component for everyone. Could you speak to your involvement in the, the passing of the Willoughby uh, Schools Levy? What was your involvement in that? It takes a lot of people to make that happen. Um, and we were able to generate quite a few people to get involved, community people to get involved. And so it was a great group effort. And people did like the sacrifices that we made. When we make those sacrifices, it's we don't want to do anything to affect kids. We want to do the least amount to affect kids. So um, some of the efforts that we've done uh, with gifted programming and AP is we had all the kids in Little East like take the PSAT test. And from that PSAT test, kids are able to get scholarships. And through AP Potential from the College Board, we're able to predict kids doing well in those AP and those honors classes. Again, the goal would be to not affect programs. Some of you are saying, well, how do you do that? Well, we were able to do that um, in, in our school, um, you know, through some negotiations and through some people sacrificing some, you know, some of their situations, whether it be uh, teaching a little bit extra or giving back a little bit. Um, but the idea is not to, uh, I mean, come on, we, we don't want to go out there and just start cutting programs. The only way that would happen is if the state took over and said you had to do it. I, those programs are so critical to students. All extracurricular activities is critical to a student development. And that, that's got to be the last resort when nothing else, and this is my opinion, that's what I would recommend. That's the last result. I mean, if we have nothing else going, we'd have to do something. Reductions being made in Brunswick that maybe you could you know, give us thoughts on. I mean, we've had a reduction plan put before the community with our last levy campaign should be effective for next school year. Well, well, currently looking at the five-year forecast, we have a negative number that we're going to end the year on, and we legally can't do that. So in terms of looking at that reduction plan, again, I would, I would as a superintendent here, would take a look at that and, and see if it's going to get us to where we need, if it is the best decisions to be made for the district. The last thing that I want to do is have a reduction that would somehow impact a child negatively. And the minute you take away a person, regardless of role, you are, you are taking away from a child. So you need to be creative, we need to be fiscally responsible, but look at other ways that we can save money. And outside of salaries and benefits for teachers, it, well, for all staff, I should say, um, your next biggest expense is looking at supplies. Are we as green as we can be here in Chardon in terms of our paper usage? Do we have and can we utilize technology in a better way where we, we can become more green and we can become more paperless? Paper is a huge expense. If you think, if you just look at copy numbers, I know we can look at programming. In, in a district this size, busing being that we have so many square miles, it probably would be the thing that I would not look at. We need to get kids to school and we have a large area to cover. However, can we look at some shared services with other districts and our ESC to reduce those costs? Absolutely. All of those things would need to be looked at um, to make sure that we did balance and to make sure that it had the least impact on kids. That would be my goal.